friends, this video on photosynthesis in higher plants part 20 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us see what happens in regeneration. So what happens in regeneration? Here regeneration of RUBP takes place. As I said, since it is a cyclic process, so the end point should also come back to the starting point and the starting point was RUBP. So again, RUBP will be formed. So it will be formed from what? Let us see that. So in the last slide, we went till the step where we were left with 10 molecules of G3P, that is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Now, this, these 10 molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate will utilize ATP. So, it will utilize ATP and this ATP will get converted into ADP. So, D-phosphorylation will take place, right? So, one phosphate will be lost here and as a result, the compound which is formed here will be RUBP, that is a 5 carbon compound will be formed. So this is known as regeneration. So here again phosphorylation occurs because ADP gets converted into ATP. So this had 3 phosphate groups, these had 2 phosphate groups. So 1 phosphate gets added to this one and that is how RUBP is formed. Because this had this compound had one phosphate group, but this compound has two phosphate group. That is why it is biphosphate. But here it is three. That three denotes the position of the phosphate group, not the number of phosphate group. Number of phosphate group is denoted by biphosphate, triphosphate, tetraphosphate, right? So here only one phosphate group. Here two phosphate group. That extra phosphate is coming from this ATP because ATP gets converted into ADP. So ATP had three phosphate. This has two phosphate. Right? So the inorganic extra phosphate gets added to form a biphosphate that is a ribulose biphosphate compound. So that is how RUBP is regenerated and the cycle is completed. So the cycle started from RUBP, carboxylation happened. So G3P was formed, the carboxylation happened. So what happened? When, when carbon, the carbon dioxide acted with this, Initially, PGA was formed, that is phosphoglycerate was formed and then on this, after a series of reduction, what happened? It forms G3P, that is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Now, while the formation of, during the reduction process, ATP and NADPH were utilized. Now, when you utilize ATP and NADPH, ATP gets converted into ADP and NADPH gets converted to NADP+. So all these products like ADP and NADP+, all these go back to the thylakoids so that they can again perform the light reactions. That is, they can again perform the cyclic and non-cyclic photophosphorylation and again produce ATP there. So this is they, these are all connected. Similarly, here again you need ATP molecule. This also comes from the process of phosphorylation. Right? So here again the ATP gets utilized and the ADP which is formed it again goes back to the thylakoid space because right now all these things are taking place in stroma. Right? So let us have a quick review of the Calvin cycle. So what happens in a Calvin cycle? So we, since we know that six Calvin cycles are needed to produce one molecule of glucose, so we will start, we will consider six cycles. That is, we will consider six molecules of RUBP. Now these six molecules of RUBP will get carboxylated. That is, six molecule of carbon dioxide will be taken up from the atmosphere. This carbon dioxide will combine with RUBP in presence of the enzyme Rubisco. So it will form 12 molecules of 3PGA. So this is the first stable compound. Since it is a 3 carbon atom, that is why it is called a C3 cycle. Now this in turn will utilize the ATP which was produced during light reaction and this ATP will get converted into ADP. So that extra phosphate will add on to this compound and it will form a biphosphate. So 12 molecules of 1,3-biphosphate, 1,3-biphosphoglycerate. 
So this will be an intermediate compound which will be formed. This in turn will again utilize the high energy electrons of NADPH. Now here you have 12 molecules of PGA so 12 molecules of ATP will be utilized. So here also you, they, it will utilize 12 molecules of NADPH. So this will get converted into NADP plus and the electrons will be utilized to form 12 molecules of G3P that is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. This glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is again a 3-carbon compound something like this C, C, C and to the third carbon atom is the phosphate group. That is why it is called glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate something like this. So now out of these 12 G3P, 2 G3P gets utilized for sugar synthesis. What happens to the remaining 10? Now you are left with 10 G3P molecules. These 10 G3P molecules further utilizes ATP which gets converted to ADP and this extra phosphate gets added to this single phosphate compound to form a biphosphate compound that is the rubulose biphosphate. So here it utilizes six molecules of ATP again. So if you look at the overall process this portion starting from here till here is known as carboxylation. So this part is called carboxylation. Starting from here the reduction process starts. So from here till here is reduction and from here till here is regeneration. So these three stages together completes the Calvin cycle. So you see this is a cycle. It started with rubulose biphosphate. It ends at ribulose biphosphate. So now if you look at this cycle, you can see that in order to produce one molecule of glucose, you needed six molecules of carbon dioxide. You needed 12 molecules of ATP, not only 12, 12 plus 6. So you actually needed total 18 molecules of ATP. You needed 6 molecules of carbon dioxide and you needed 12 molecules of NADPH. So just see how much of energy is required for this. So now you understand the significance of light reaction. This ATP and NADPH are produced by light reaction. Another interesting thing to note here is you see here in order to produce one molecule of glucose you need more molecules of ATP than the number of molecules of NADPH. And that is why you have an additional process called cyclic photophosphorylation to produce additional ATP molecules. You remember while I was talking about the light reaction, I told you there are two processes. One is non-cyclic photophosphorylation, the other is cyclic photophosphorylation. So non-cyclic photophosphorylation produces both ATP and NADPH. But cyclic photophosphorylation produces only ATP. So the production of ATP is more there because the amount of ATP needed in the dark reaction is also more. So these additional requirement of ATP is fulfilled by the process of cyclic photophosphorylation. Right? So this is all about the Calvin cycle. So let us quickly conclude the Calvin cycle. So here the Calvin cycle has been explained in a very simple manner without considering the number of carbon dioxide molecules. It will just tell you what are the intermediate products which will be formed at each step. Now the overall conclusion of Calvin cycle is that for one cycle, how many carbon dioxide will get fixed? As I said, in one Calvin cycle, one cycle, only one molecule of carbon dioxide can be fixed. So how many molecules of ATP will be required? Total three molecules because during the reduction phase, if only one molecule of carbon dioxide is getting fixed, so how many molecules of phosphoglycerate will be formed? Two, right? That is what I explained when I was explaining you the carboxylation step. So if two molecules of phosphoglycerate are there, so each molecule will need one ATP. So in this step, 2 ATP will be required. Again here 1 ATP will be required. So total 3 ATP molecules will be required in one cycle. So 3 molecules of ATP. What about NADPH? As I said 
each molecule of PGA that is phosphoglycerate, each molecule of phosphoglycerate will need one NADPH. Now when one carbon dioxide is fixed, two molecules of PGA is formed. Therefore, two molecules of NADPH will be needed. So here two molecules of NADPH will be needed. This is when we are talking about one cycle. So in one cycle, only one carbon dioxide molecule will combine with one molecule of RUBP. But if we want to, and what will be the result of one cycle? One sixth of a molecule of glucose will be produced. You will not get one molecule of glucose. One sixth molecule of glucose. Now, if you want one molecule of glucose, so all of these should become six times because you are actually multiplying six to this. So in that case, you need six cycles. And for six cycles, you need six molecules of carbon dioxide. You need 18 molecules of ATP you need 12 molecules of NADPH and the result would be one molecule of glucose. So I hope now you understand the concept of Kelvin cycle and how ATP and NADPH which were products of light reaction are utilized in the Kelvin cycle. So this was all about the Kelvin cycle. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.